welcome everyone to the morning session today uh, just i wanted to have a reflection on yesterday's this day before yesterday uh, as you said yesterday that uh, sometimes we meet some actor and we want to get name and fame and then even you said that okay uh, here is the family where we can share uh, where sometimes we can't share anywhere else so just i am reminded and then you carry on that for many years so i just wanted to share with this family that this happened with me i started doing theater during my college days and then from that it came to my mind that okay uh, i can because the name and fame and all that acting became my passion but uh, then it frustrated me also that okay i want to i wanted to have this as a profession but then i could not become that it carried on uh, with me for many years and now even i see back so i can see that okay uh, even i was doing theater for what purpose i was doing that for getting that position name and fame was also one of the reason also it give it used to give lot of satisfaction also you are playing some meaningful things but then now after so many years after joining this uhb and especially this morning session means i am realizing that that frustration has gone now and uh, the self is more important and that again wanted to get some fa favorable feeling from the others was the only way to live so now it is the worst means even if i am now doing some theater like uh, in my college also i am making my students to do the theater so we are trying to uh, do a theater which is solution based so for the self development means this is what uh, i am reminded of yesterday you said that we carry we carry something for years and just i wanted to share that this happened with me also for many years the frustration was there but now it is stable uh so and then obviously the body uh, is an instrument now uh, we understand that and because that i think that the issue main issue is this, that we are not knowing about the self and we are assuming ourselves as body and that is i think we all are into it the people uh, who don't know about it but now we are getting aware so it is a lot of stability and a lot of calmness so i can book means go back and see that okay what i wanted to do earlier it was all my pre conditioning assumption and that gave me a lot of frustrations and anxiety now it is reverse the body is just an instrument and i have shared earlier also that for last one year two years i have reduced 10 kg weight but i am not doing anything extra for it because now the self is at the center and body is at and level number 2 so it is happening by itself so this is what i wanted to share from yesterday's your uh, uh point i just wanted to share it in the beginning thank you very much nice bhaiya nice so now we are in the process of this full uh, <clears throat> full self check up as we were discussing yesterday that when you go to a doctor we go for full body check up now in the morning session we are doing a full self check up so we could have many such wishes desires you know, uh, which are there in us and which might have got covered with time but as we start exploring as we start to be with ourselves those may come to the surface and we get exposed to that so we are just trying to investigate all that is there in us we just trying to investigate you know the deep seated desires the conditionings the inclinations or the pains suffering whatever could be inside and we are trying to get resolved because unless we are resolved on those counts they continue somewhere or the other and they get triggered according to the situation according to the circumstance 
you may not be aware that this kind of desire is there in me, which has been there in me for a long time. But somehow, you know, with passage of time, it got somewhat suppressed and comes to the surface any time. Maybe somebody was so fond of uh, Thero Shairi at some point of time. Now he went into academics and went for technical education or something and then uh, that kind of desire got suppressed. But someday when, uh, when he listens to any person reciting this, that desire again starts surfacing. So many kinds of things could be there. I'm not listing all that. There could be some suffering, some deep pain. And we maybe got ditched in some relationship sometime. We forgot it, but sometimes I get reminded and becomes a source of pain inside. Let me just read the assignment that we shared yesterday. So while seeing things around you, notice the role of the eyes. Who is seeing, you or the eyes? Now close your eyes. Can you still get information about things outside? Perhaps by keenly listening to the sounds around you, smelling the air, touching with the hands. So there could be so many ways of seeing. In fact, ultimately I am the seer, I am using the body as an instrument and I can use any organ of the body, the sense organ for seeing. I can see through eyes, I can see through ear, I can see through nose, I can see through tongue, I can see through skin. All those possibilities are there. While doing activities throughout the day, observe who is doing the activities, self or the body. Can you notice that you are taking the decision within you before doing the activity? For example, when you want to wake up and get out of bed in the morning, who is deciding, self or body? Can you also see that you are the experiencer, that you keep experiencing happiness or unhappiness within you, not the body? For example, when eating food, when someone says a kind of word to you, when someone criticizes you. So all the decisions that are taking place, again, they are being made by me, not the body. I am the decision maker because I am the doer. In every action of mine, I am the decision maker. If I am sending some instruction to the body, I am deciding. When I am receiving some sensation from the body, then also I am deciding. Now, when I am able to see that I am the doer, not anything outside, there is no mystery behind it. And whatever is happening in my life, so there is one role that I am playing. And then situations may be because of so many roles being played, fine. But whatever I am doing, it is my decision. Then I become responsible to my actions. Now I cannot blame things you know, for my happiness or unhappiness because it is me who is deciding. Similarly, we can see that I am the experiencer. I experience happiness or unhappiness, not the body. And I want continuity of happiness inside. I want the source of happiness to be innate to me. I want to experience happiness in continuity. And if I do not have the right understanding or right feeling, I am not able to ensure it in continuity. So I keep on craving for happiness from outside. So even though I am using the body to get happiness from outside, it's not the body that is getting happy. It is me who is getting happy. Can you see that self is central to your existence as a human being and that you are using the body as a tool or an instrument and you can note your observations. So nice. We can have more reflections on this. As Stefan Bhaiya was sharing, uh... I do remind that I have uh, my own life, Baya. Uh, for past two decades, uh, I considered myself to be a motivation speaker. I used to collect information from many books and I get inspired from their life stories and I pass it on to my students. So it was happening for more than two decades, Baya. I was self-motivated and I was passing the same message to all my students. Only after UHV, I could see myself by uh, that I wanted to become a motivational speaker because I just want to get rid of my own problems because then and there I was facing some problems. I don't know how to come out of it. Then I want to become name fame. I want to be appreciated. 
so that was the reason and also by yeah, after uhv i could see that all those motivation speeches lectures they were working at the surface level momentarily i will be motivated i myself will be motivated but maybe after a week or 10 days that energy that spirit will go off by yeah. then again i have to read some other motivation stories to get motivated so that, this was happening for quite some time but i was unaware of it but only after uhv i was able to understand that it was working only at the surface level it was only temporary that motivation that drive driving force was only momentary we have to work at the root level and that is possible of having right understanding and right feeling in the self because previously i was not aware of self and i was talking to students and also to myself only about mindset change your mindset if you change your mind mindset everything is possible so i was making that gross misunderstanding about that mindset that brain so only after uhc i was able to get the clear picture so little bit i am able to understand this is right understanding i was having many assumptions and that was not sustainable so it's really a new insight by after uhc i am learning what is the core where we have to concentrate and the real purpose and meaning of life by yeah so that and all i came to know only after getting connected with uhv so little bit i'm getting that clarity of the bigger canvas by yeah so i thought this i would, i should share with everyone thank you so much by yeah this is my nice very nice Didi. in fact the more we explore we can see that in the past also we had been trying to get happiness but it was from outside we had so many plans programs desires ambitions but the basic motivation was coming primarily from two things happiness from sensation from the body or to get happiness from some feeling shared by others in the form let's say name fame or being paid attention things like that G- we are not exploring not looking to the natural acceptance then we may spend our whole life facing and always feeling within you can just see like it's a kind of state of being liberated once you are able to see that if the source of happiness is outside i am going to be lived so at least we have so it's a kind of state of being liberated that now no longer i am trying to fetch happiness from outside at least i do not have that ambition that i have to get more and more happiness from sources outside i may not be in a state where happiness has become innate to me it may take time but at least my program is clear it cannot be the goal of my life it cannot be the ambition in my life that i have to do so many things so that everybody uh, comes to know my name i get so much of fame you know or i get so many ways of getting pleasures from sensation from outside so at least our vision has transformed this is something quite visible even if the vision gets transformed then our program becomes clear and then we are working in that direction uh, gradually we are progressing we are trying to first of all develop the imagination uh, rightly and then we are also trying to awaken the higher level activities of the self so the program has become clear and the program is to you know have right understanding right feeling within us so that the source of happiness is innate to us and not something outside you'll see that if you are able to decide this in our relationships then our relationship also become mutually fulfilling it may be the case that some of us were trying very hard to fulfill our relationship isn't it there doing so many things to make the spouse happy or make 
maybe the in-laws happy or the children happy or the friends happy or the colleagues or subordinates or boss happy but it was not coming to fruition something was missing and we are getting tired in that effort but once we are able to see that this is not the source of happiness on either side in fact i have to ensure the right feeling in us i have to ensure right understanding in me then only i can be happy and once i am happy then i can share the same sort of happiness with the other also and then gradually our relationships become mutually fulfilling with so much effort we were not able to fulfill the other because we are trying to get happiness from outside and also trying to help the other get happiness from our conduct so we are helping the other fulfill the need for happiness from outside and that's how we are getting getting tired in our relationships but now that we are able to see this particular thing then our program is clear and we are able to give the right program to our relatives also nice nice didi so we can see with some analysis with some observation and then finally we can be able to see this very naturally that i am the seer i am the doer i am the enjoyer or experiencer not the body it's not the body that is observing or doing or uh, getting happy or unhappy so i am central to my being as a human being so self is central to human existence and then we are able to see that this body is merely an instrument and i have to utilize this instrument rightly isn't it? and with this so many things we are able to see because once i am able to conclude within me that body is my instrument so my goal of life is clear that it is awakening to the higher level activities of with the self that is me i have to awaken to my higher level activities that would be the take away of my life this body being an instrument i have to take care of the body properly so my body also becomes healthier and i am able to see that the need of body is limited to make this instrument work properly i have to arrange for physical facilities so with that understanding of limitedness of needs of the body i feel more and more prosperous gradually i can see that okay only these many limited facilities are required so generally we used to feel deprived at times but that is no longer there and also we see that since we are able to see very naturally that the need of the physical facility is limited so we are not exploiting others or the rest of nature for the sake of accumulation and indulgence so now you will see that the better uh, scenario the better state state of justice in families okay you see that in the families injustice is so common people somewhat now accept that okay these things are going to be there in the families and that is because uh, assuming oneself to be the body and trying to get happiness from outside we keep on exploiting others maybe somebody who is working in our house maybe our relatives maybe people in the surrounding so with this clarity of self being central to human existence and the goal of self being clear we are able to fulfill others also be it human being or the rest of nature once we start feeling prosperous we have a feeling of sharing with others yes we have a feeling of you know ensuring give and give relationships in place of going for take and take relationships we also give back to the nature we also try to give back to the society so there is a lot of transformation that you might observe in your living with this gradual self exploration i would like to share my yesterday's experience about the body as a tool and we are seer and doer yesterday i was uh, evening i was uh, sitting at home just uh, thinking something in my in, inside me my wife uh, has started a, a water filter to fill up the water pot and she was going for some work out so she said just take care as it should not be overflow now i was inside me and uh, water pot has filled fully it has started overflowing but uh, i could not see it 
because I would I was inside. So suddenly our neighbor lady came for some work for my wife. She when she entered it, and she told me that uh, water is overflowing. But I, even I could not listen that. She had gone and uh, switched off the uh, filter. And then uh, again she said, "What I, are you not uh, listening? The water is flowing outside. So uh, this given me a clear-cut uh, uh, understanding that when we are inside, when we are uh, we are not listening to our body or we are not uh, seeing through our body, even if we ha I have an eye, even I have a ear, still neither I am able to listen, neither I am listening, nor I am uh, seeing. So that yes, clear-cut yes. gives me a conclusion that whenever I wish, and whenever, whenever I decide that I want to see, then only body will, then only I will be able to uh, see, or body will be able to see, or uh, body will be able to uh, listen. If our attention is somewhere else, even then, even when the sound is loud, we are not able to pay attention to the sound because our attention is somewhere else. Ji. In fact, this doesn't mean I was not seeing. I was seeing, but I was seeing inside something else. Yes, yes. Something. Yes. So my thinking was going on. I was seeing that thinking, but not what yes. is happening uh, around me. Yeah, even at this moment, when you are talking to me, you are paying attention to to this interaction. And there would be so many sounds in your house. You are not paying atten attention there. Isn't it? It is also quite possible. So there would be so many sounds in the house. Uh, maybe some would be there at a high pitch, some would be there at a low pitch. But since you are paying attention to this conversation, then you are not paying attention there. So every time we are paying attention somewhere or the other. And we are deciding where to pay attention to. And we are deciding the object of this attention. Isn't it? Nice, Vijay? Yes, sir. Okay, so having gone through the assignment, now we can now discuss the lecture. So yesterday we had concluded the third part of this uh, introductory content. Uh, let us just go through the sum up slide and then we can go to lecture four. So with the discussion that we had till yesterday, we concluded that human being is coexistence of self and body. The self is the seer, doer, and enjoyer. It is central to human existence. The need of the self is continuous happiness. For this, the program of the self is to understand harmony and to live in harmony. And when we say to understand harmony and live in harmony, what does it mean? So I have to look at the complete expanse of my living. I am living as an individual. Okay. So within us, we are thinking something, we are doing something with the body. So we are living as an individual. Now, wherever we are living, we are in relationships. So we are a part of family, as a member of family. So it may be the case that someone is living in a hostel, okay, or someone is there uh, outside. But yes, we are still embedded in relationships. Even though I am living in a hostel, I have parents, I have brother and sister. And, I, and in the hostel also I have friends. So in the family, essentially means that we are living in and I need to understand and so there are so many people around me, right? I'm not interacting with them. I'm not aware of so many things about them, but I'm a part of the society. Whatever happens in the society, it does matter to me. If there is terrorism in the society, then within me, as an individual, I am always engrossed in my imagination with fear. And then we are also a unit in nature and existence. So I also need to understand the rest of nature. Because when I go to fulfill the needs of the body, I get facilities from the rest of nature. So I need to understand them. It's a pity that with so long history of human civilization, we have not been able to understood, understand what 
food means to me you have not been able to understand what cloth means to me isn't it today we are not clear where to take food from because you are not able to understand the rest of nature so i need to understand harmony at every level of our living and to ensure harmony in our living and with this we can see that production protection and right utilization of physical facility is a small part of my program it is not my entire program so this cannot be my life to be confined to physical facilities working day and night for physical facilities right missing out the understanding missing out the feeling and the body is merely my instrument it is there with me it is not me and we'll see further also in detail but something that we talked briefly is that the transaction between self and body is only in the form of information there is no material transaction here now if you elaborate on this then we can see that whatever i get from the body is only a mere information the taste that i get from the body is an information i might have a craving for sensation from the body but when i am able to see that it is merely an information it will come and pass away isn't it and i associate some meaning to this information i call it sometimes happiness sometimes unhappiness so try to observe this whatever i am getting from the body is only information right the conditioning is there in me the imagination is there in me with which i associate meaning to this information i call it happiness sometimes i call it unhappiness right and when i am sending some instruction to the body that is also a mere information nice so having concluded all this we can now go to session 4 so we'll try to understand the human being in more detail now in this session we have talked about the coexistence of self and body now i'll go to understand the self already we have about the self in the degree workshop in which we two workshop and we have been having uh this content being shared in the meetings also but we see that with the information that are getting from outside as a proposal there is still lot to explore within to investigate to observe within so this is something that we will try to do we have got the proposal earlier we have been able to analyze it to a large extent but can we see it can we see it directly so when i observe myself then i can see a few things this is something that we observed in the previous lecture that self is there and body is there <clears throat> now within me there is imagination i am doing something or the other every moment there is imagination in me it is an ongoing process in me and this imagination has desire thought and expectation so within my imagination i have some desire i have some thought i have some expectation what this means may not be very clear to me i may not be able to make out distinctly that in my imagination what part is thought what part is desire what part is expectation so we may not be clear exactly many times we consider our expectation to be desire or thought to be something else so desire is essentially something that i want to be i want to be happy i want to be prosperous now this is my basic desire my basic aspiration but i may have so many sub desires to fulfill this basic desire so i may have a desire to be a person with lot of name and fame lot of wealth i may have a desire to be secure with my family i may have a desire to continue with the body forever so many desires i might have i may have a desire to be a person who never has any wrinkle on the body isn't it i may assume that i am going to be there so long as the body is there so we may have so many desires based on this assumption so the basic desire is to be happy and prosperous in continuity and with that we have desire to be something or the other to fulfill this basic desire now based on this i have thoughts i analyze 
I compare. So I have thoughts how to fulfill. So desire is to be something. Thought means how to ensure it. This how part is the thought. How to ensure it? How to fulfill those desires? And then the expectation is when we have some taste within, and we try to make selections. Let this happen. Let this happen inside or outside. Mostly, when we do not have right understanding, we are always expecting things from outside. Let this happen outside so that I feel happy inside. Let the other person pay attention to me. Let the other person appreciate me. Then I feel happy. Let me be the center of the party today. Let this happen. Let that happen. Let me get promotion this way. Let me get some increment. Let others listen to me. Let others do as I do. Let others act as I instruct. So many expectations we might have. So when you look at the imagination, we can see that it is made up of desire, thought, and expectation. And we can also see that this is continuous in me. Now, whatever I am doing with the body, so when I am sending some instruction to the body, I am having some imagination within, and with that imagination, I am sending some instruction to the body. When I am receiving sensation from the body, then with this imagination in me only, I am accepting that information from the body in the form of sensation. Right. So, as Bhaiya was mentioning right now, that. His attention was somewhere else, so he could not listen to the sound of the water overflowing. So we have some imagination going on inside us, and it may be so uh, much engrossing that we are not able to pay attention outside at times. So what is to be observed here? Observe first of all that imagination is going on inside you. It is going on in you, not the body. Then this imagination is made up of. Desire, thought, and expectation, and whatever we are doing with the body, sending instruction or to receive or receiving sensation, it is there based on this imagination. Nice. Ah, uh, Bhaiya, one question was, like uh, expectation, we have to be outside, so we have to be outside. I mean, something to happen with us. Uh, or from others that is there right and yes and uh, i want to know more about information i mean how do we define or what is information so you mean how to define information or what do you mean by ha jaise humne abhi desire thought or expectation ka uh, हमने एक मीनिंग दिया है उसको ओके जी द डेफिनेट मीनिंग टू दिस व्हाट डू यू मीन बाय इंफॉर्मेशन सो इंफॉर्मेशन इज देयर एज बिटवीन सेल्फ एंड द बॉडी एंड इट इज इफेक्ट ऑफ सेल्फ ऑन द बॉडी और इफेक्ट ऑफ बॉडी ऑन द सेल्फ परस्परता में प्रभाव है ये जी Okay, so like instruction, like we want the hand to move. Yes. Now, uh, uh, this information is sent by the self to body. Yes. So the two units are here: consciousness and material unit. Yes. And the effect of self on the body. How does this effect take place? So that is in the form of information. I am giving some instruction. G. And you can further see that this effect of one unit on the other is through space, hmm. which yeah. is all reflecting, which is transparent. Hmm. Yeah. Or this information, I mean, this how what the information to send or um, see these motor abilities of a human. They say uh, I'm just exploring, Bhaiya, but. Uh, they say uh, when the child is there and uh, trying to grip something uh, so child desire something actually and uh, gives information and actually tries to do something get feedback learn from it 
so uh, uh, there is this give and take of information right i mean from a physical facility okay i have touched it now this expectation is or desire is fulfilled the expectation is fulfilled now i know what exactly information to give to the body and then i can do that or something like that not very clear what you are saying so if you look at the child the child has a desire to know yes now how to know so the way his body is uh, there presently the growth that has taken place in the body so the child is using the uh, organs the work organs to uh -huh. get some information and the child is assuming that this information is a way to know the things so he will touch maybe if you look at very small children they will take everything in the mouth you know, as mm. if it is something to eat so they may assume that this is something to eat or they may also try to get some information from the tongue mm. they try to get information by touch they are not able to follow the language so you know whatever mm. we explain about the object may not be clear for a very small child but if you give that particular thing in the hand he will touch it in so many ways to get mm. to know more and more about it or even put in the mouth assuming it something so that is there so the child has the mm. desire to know yes and yes. from that yeah the child is analyzing how to know about things and then the child is making some selection yes so i am just trying to understand more sorry sorry yes okay. right and then the child is testing also yes so i am trying to know more about this information um जैसे आपने यू सेड दैट परस्परता में प्रभाव या इफेक्ट ऑन सेल्फ इफेक्ट ऑफ सेल्फ ऑन बॉडी बट दैट डजेंट लीड मी टू एनी डीपर अंडरस्टैंडिंग प्रोबेबली यस सो इफ यू सी देर आर फाइव डायमेंशंस ऑफ अ यूनिट फॉर्म प्रॉपर्टी नेचुरल कैरेक्टरिस्टिक इनेटनेस एंड सबमर्जेंस so hmm. the content to know basically is natural characteristic innateness and submergence hmm for about form and property we gather information hmm so by utilizing the property of the self in coexistence with the body we are getting some information now sure. we are analyzing that information to know more and more but that again remains limited to form and property only but when we are yes. able to see directly a reality where the mm. body has no role to play this information that i get from the body works as a background you know that mm. uh, this may not be you know something else this could be only this kind of thing so we get some some kind of assessment about the reality some anuman we may say you know about the reality yes, yes. and with that assessment we try to look further and deeper and then we are able to see that yes so if you look at relationship like mm. contemplation of relationship mm. now when i do when i look at interaction between two units so i can see the property mm. okay then i try to contemplate like the plant is growing to a tree and you know, being mm. always rooted in the soil so mm. first of all i see the form okay this plant was only this you know much uh, tall yesterday yes. and it it has become taller today and in one month it yes. becomes so tall so i'm looking at the change in form yes now this is something that is coming to me as an information the change in form yes okay then yes. i analyze it how this form is changing if i water it it will grow if i do not water it it will not grow so it means mm. the plant is absorbing something from the soil is something that we can again make out by looking at the form of soil the form of tree if the soil is wet the chai uh, the plant grows if the soil is not wet the plant doesn't grow so mm -hmm. there is a property of the plant you know that it grows if it gets moisture if it gets nutrients from the soil so i am able to again you know see this but this again is confined to form and property then yes. when i contemplate upon this that what it is what is happening basically mm. so i can see that there is a relationship here between the plant and the soil Mm. there is yes. a relationship between each and every 
and you know, leaf of the plant with other leaves with the stem with the air there is a basically a relationship between any two units in this nature now this is contemplating so what has mm -hmm. happened i have seen the form through the information that i get from the body now looking at the change in form i have been able to make out the property within my imagination and then i yes. try to contemplate and i get to see the relationship and when i okay. see this relationship it is not confined to one tree or one part of the soil i can see this relationship between any two units yes i can see this relationship among all the four orders so yes. this contemplation is taking place inside me now this information only work as a tool to give me mm. some basic idea right yes. and then i concluded yes. and i could you know be able to my competence developed to that level that i can see the relationship now going yes. further i can see that whatever happens to this plant it continues to be whether this is a plant or a tree or it goes back to the soil you know when yes. it falls to the soil the stem falls to the soil it continues to be in some form so or the other yes in some form or the other so each and every part of this plant is going to be there you know? it is going to exist and the yes. same thing holds true for any other unit <clears throat> so i can see the innateness mm. that mm. Uh, this is the uh, basic innateness that every thing in this universe continues to be it exists in some form or the other now when it comes yes. to conscious unit the constitution of the unit remains as it is but when it comes to material unit the constitution also changes so that is the basic yes. difference yes and then yes. i try to see what is the base of all this how come this mm. form is sustaining how come this property is there how come this relationship is there how come this mm. uh, innateness is there what is at the base how come things are so self organized how they are related you know how they are fulfilling the relationships how they are energized so i try to look at the basis of all this and then i try to see the submergence i try to see the space when i come to see that space is there at the base mm -hmm. in submerged in space you know every unit yeah. is there with a definite form property right natural characteristic innateness submergence so i can see yeah. the basis now. now with that my understanding of reality the knowledge of reality gets complete so this yes. is the way i progress so the body has been working as an instrument the information mm. that i am getting is helping me build up the base for knowing correct yes yes bhaiya so information is something which we gather uh, through uh, different senses it has form touch i mean aakar hai jisko and yeah yeah yes yes thank you bhaiya thank you very much nice bhaiya yeah. yes i was having just one question like as you mentioned that desire like what we want and thought is how we can get it so for what you want to be but what we want to be okay yes. and for expectation what we can define in a single word so the selection that we are making or the tip that we are carrying within that is the expectation and with that i have expectation of letting things happen accordingly so okay. what i want to be is desire how to make it mm -hmm. happen is mm -hmm. thought and let it happen is expectation Okay. So I want to be prosperous. Okay. Now with some mm -hmm. assumption, I may feel that if I get a lottery, I will become prosperous. So I work out how to win a lottery. This is there going on in my thought. Which one, and not to go for. And then I am always expecting that late this time my lottery gets successful. Hmm. Okay. So whenever I am going to purchase a new lottery ticket, I am expecting that, and I'll let it happen this time. Let this work. Okay, Maya. Thank you. Thank you. Nice to see. Yeah. Last uh, yesterday, we were in the uh, FDP face to face FDP as an observer myself, and uh, the mindset of the people, the South Coast, deep rooted. You are in Bangalore. Where are you? Uh, I am from Hyderabad. This is was uh, Gupta. Yeah, and in that is fine. But where is the workshop going on in Bangalore? Uh, uh, in Hyderabad, uh, uh, Institute of Public Enterprises. Sunil Bai is the resource person. Okay, okay, nice, Bhaiya. Yeah, yeah. 
నమస్తే టు ఆల్ మీ కో ఎక్స్ప్లోరర్స్ ఆల్సో అండ్ ఎస్టర్డే వాట్ వీ హ్ సీన్ ఇన్ ద పార్టిసిపేట్ మోస్ట్ ఆఫ్ దమ్ దే హ్యావ్ వెరీ మచ్ డీప్ రూటెడ్ సంస్కార్స్ దాట్ వెన్ వీ ఆస్క్ వెన్ వీ డిస్కస్ అబౌట్ దిస్ ఫిజికల్ ఫెసిలిటీ అండ్ రిలేషన్షిప్ అండ్ ఆల్ దోస్ వీ ఆస్క్ దెమ్ టు వాట్ ఆర్ దేర్ ఆస్పిరేషన్స్ ఇన్ ద హౌ టు వాట్ దే ఆర్ ఏబుల్ టు అండర్స్టాండ్ సో ఫార్ కరెంట్లీ వాట్ దేర్ మైండ్ సెట్ దెన్ దే ఎవరిబడి ఈ సెల్లింగ్ ఇఫ్ ఐ కమ్ అవుట్ ఫ్రమ్ మై ఫైనాన్షియల్ బర్డెన్స్ మై uh bank loans and uh, if i have house and if i earn some money to and give my family for full uh, lot of facilities and uh, my uh, parents and all those they said on person he said that because of uh, lack of money i am uh, my relations have been broken with uh, others so one marriage i uh, would have been attended but, uh, but uh, because i don't have money i am unable to present with my family there so i there is a broken relationship with them so he was saying that money is the most important uh, money only builds relationships so such type of mindsets people have already so these samskars whatever deep rooted samskars how uh, is possible to overcome this uh, they are of course undergoing the chv first day yesterday so i got some thought how these people are able to understand because they are looking into outside world that is the basic drawback uh, that is the, my uh, sharing by uh, what i have observed from the people so many are saying about money only they are talking about their aspiration and concern yeah so the way out is self exploration so this workshop is basically meant for it so people yes. might have so many assumptions within and they might be assuming the lack of physical facility to be the source of unhappiness in life but the yes. more they are able to explore they are able to see that it is not due to lack of physical facility but due to lack of relationship and the lack of relationship can be sorted only with right understanding yes yes this is a major task that we are doing through workshops we are drawing yes. the attention yes. of the people you know they might yes. already have abundance of physical facility also it could be possible but yeah, the yeah. happiness is not there yes yes and that is because they have not been able to place right understanding in relationship at the correct priority in life yes yes this is one major thing that is happening and this is something that we can see uh, that gets accomplished in a very short period of time like the success of the workshop if you see is that people are able to place this priority in life very soon yes yes okay now it takes time to work on that priority but at least yeah. they are able to see that it is not owing to the lack of physical facility that they are suffering yeah it is due to lack of relationship and they are not able to have mutual happiness in the relationship because they have not been working for right understanding they have been preconditioned in so many ways yeah and they have been yeah. conditioning others also yes 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 so that is first day of their workshop of course it's to remaining two days if they explore much then they may have better understanding Yes, yes. Thank you. Nice, Bhaiya. Sunil Bhaiya is also here. Bhaiya would like to comment something on the uh, participation of the people in the workshop. Then you may also comment something. Hey, Bhaiya. Namaste. Namaste, all. Namaste, Bhaiya. Yeah, the participation is very good. A lot of uh, exploration. It's a B school, business school. So many people have uh, many uh, kind of applications as Bhaiya pointed out. but the questions and sharings are helping them towards their own self exploration and uh, we also have helped them in the, on the first day it was very nice lot of questions lot of uh, respond i mean lot of sharing from their own life and uh, the workshop is going on very well i would say in day 2 and day 3 we expect more participants to come out as volunteers also in the very interested it is uh, gida potter this college acha okay nice nice bhaiya yeah yeah nice bhaiya very nice so let us keep observing this the next thing that we can observe is that whatever is there as an activity in terms of behavior or work it is being guided by my imagination so whenever i am behaving there is some imagination behind it whatever words i use there is some imagination behind it the way i use my body to express some feeling there is some imagination behind it and similarly with work whatever i do in terms of work 
there's some imagination behind it. So we can very much see all this. One thing, imagination is there in me, not the body. Second, it is continuous. Third, it is made up of desire, thought, expectation. Fourth, that I am interacting with the body and every time there is imagination behind this interaction with the body, whether I am sending instruction or receiving sensation. And expanding over it, this interaction with the body is there in the form of behavior and work uh, when I am expressing something outside. And there again, some imagination is there at the base. So this much we can see, this much we can try to observe. Ji bhaiya, click it once. Now we can see that our imagination may be having one source as preconditioning, something that we have come to assume. Come to assume about individual, about family, about society, about nature or existence and we have we might not have verified it so it becomes a kind of conditioning layer by layer there could be so many conditioning so one source of imagination is this preconditioning pre means that i have formed before this moment of time i'm already conditioned to imagine like that so it so happened that whether i know or i do not know i have to live and i have to live with the reality i have to interact with the reality so I assume something within me and then try to interact with the reality. And if I find that this assumption is working and it becomes consistent kind of observation in me that this assumption is working, then it becomes a conditioning in me and I get preconditioned. One way could be this. Second thing is that I have not paid attention and I assume something to be true I do not question it ever. So when I'm looking at the other human being, I'm looking at the body. So I assume that this person and I is a body. I assume something similar about myself also. So I do not even give a thought to it, whether it is self or body or something else. Okay. I just assume it and I go by it. So there could be several ways of having the preconditioning in us. And this is one major potent source of imagination. The second source of imagination is sensation that I get from the body. Now through the sense organs, we are getting some information. So one source of sensation could be the activities inside the body. The second source could be behavior of some other person. Then somebody is saying something to me and I listen to that. It comes as a sensation to me. The third could be the information that I'm getting about the rest of nature through the body. Through all these, I'm getting some sensation. So I'm getting this sensation you know, from the body. But if I associate this sensation to be happiness, to happiness, then that becomes a major source for my imagination where I'm trying to fetch happiness from outside. So this is another source of imagination. And the third source is my natural acceptance. Generally, I seldom pay attention to this natural acceptance, but I can see that there's something within me which guides me. When I question things, I get some answer from inside. When I'm in doldrums, when I'm at crossroads, and I question what to do, what not to do. I look at my inner conscience. I look at something innate to me. That particular innate faculty of mind is natural acceptance. So this is the third source. So the next thing to observe is what are my sources of imagination from where I'm getting. So it may be the case that going through the workshops, we have been able to place these three things and this becomes also a kind of structure in us. But now let us observe it freely where I'm getting this imagination from. What are the sources of imagination? Am I able to see within me that these are the three sources, preconditioning, sensation, and natural acceptance? Or is there some other source also? Could there be a fourth source also? So I have to observe it freely. So I have to look within, and then we can start from there. That there's some imagination in me, right? And that imagination is coming from somewhere. So 
either it is based on some preconditioning or some sensation or natural acceptance and with that there is some content of imagination and with this content of imagination i am feeling sometimes happy sometimes unhappy sometimes comfortable sometimes uncomfortable sometimes relaxed sometimes anxious sometimes reactive sometimes feeling responsible sometimes excited sometimes depressed so try to observe this try to make it out okay so this diagram was <clears throat> uh, something that is known to us we have been uh, seeing this diagram <clears throat> for a long time but now we have to see this particular thing inside I have to observe my imagination. I have to observe the sources of imagination. I have to make out whether this could be sensation of preconditioning or natural acceptance. How to distinguish between preconditioning and natural acceptance? This is a major task to be done. Should I call it natural acceptance or should I call it preconditioning? How can I make out the natural acceptance? Even should I call it desire or should I call it natural acceptance? So those questions might be there inside. You need to observe it. So I'll keep the discussion up to here. We'll have some assignment based on this. It is going to be time now. So I invite Tarab here now to conclude. Jee.